What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nine Nerd Yards. The gang is back with a cancer attack, and if this episode taught me anything, it's to watch the company you keep and always make sure to change your socks. First off, thank you so much for helping me hit 2,000 subscribers. I was just talking about how hype I was to get to 700 subs last week. Y'all are amazing, and I honestly don't know where to go from here, but I can start by getting into the episode. As you know, last week was a one-off episode, like the season premiere, with a timeline that seems to be running outside of the main group's universe, or possibly all in Earn's dreams. So, although we are in episode 5, this is actually only the third episode we have in the season with the main crew. The last time we were with the group, they were in London at Fernando's party before they had to split, like the tree Alfred cut down. This week we're in Prague with the gang, and this episode takes place entirely at the venue Al is having his show, or should I say rap presentation. Oh, uh, the rap presentation, yes. The episode starts with sound checks coming from Ern as he's getting the stage crew ready. I thought it was a super cool shot following a runner through the venue delivering coffee. And as he's getting closer to Ern, Ern's voice transitions from over radio to IRL. Hey, could you get rid of all the ginger ale in there? Why? We asked for ginger beer, not ginger ale. Okay, I want it. We then cut to Darius and Al backstage. Darius somehow got his hands on the blueprints to the venue and is planning on having an adventure, finding missing rooms that aren't included in the blueprint. Alfred says that's cool as long as it's not like the time in Milwaukee. Darius claims that he saw a ghost and Al disputes that saying, That was a ghost I saw. Nigga, that was your reflection, right? I'm pretty sure that this is a nod to the theme of ghosts that has been mentioned in basically every episode of the season thus far. Darius and Al's conversation is interrupted by none other other than Socks walking in the room asking if they want to go to the strip club after the show. Darius and Al slightly roast Socks on the basis that the last Euro strip club they went to, the girls had no ass. But Socks is apparently gang now? but no van in this episode. Okay, all right, okay. For many reasons, this infuriates me. We met Socks in episode three at Fernando the Billionaire's party. Socks encounters Darius after a slightly racial interaction and instigates other party guests to increasingly become more hostile to the person Socks has deemed as a racist. All of this occurs as Socks is ignoring Darius' objections to turn it into a big deal. In my breakdown of that episode, I talked about how that situation is basically Twitter justice personified, where people People want to seem like allies to oppress people, but don't want to actually take the time to listen to the people they are trying to defend, and are more looking for something to pour their malice and cruelty out on. And when the gang left Fernando's party in a rush in that episode, they hopped into a car not knowing that Socks was already in the front seat, and none of the crew actually looked happy about that, so I'm extremely surprised to see Socks is still with the gang while Van is absent from this episode. After Al and Darius rose Socks about the strip club, Ern informs Al that he has a visitor from the Make-A-Wish foundation a young boy that just wants to meet paper boy if it is for paper boy i want to help Ern leaves the meet and greet to finish preparing for the show and is stopped by security for a check. And this little moment made me so mad because we see in the beginning of the episode that the guy running coffee for the show wasn't checked basically at all. But Ern, who is actually running the show, is held to much greater scrutiny. Ern handles his business, gets the show prepared and everything, and informs the Make-A-Wish kid that Al needs to get ready for the show. And on their way out, Al gives the sick kid a 40 ounce. And I love seeing the kid's parents' reaction because like, what's the 40 ounce gonna do? Kill the kid? And so we see Ern is being a great manager for Al and anticipating his every want and concern. We can see that Ern is extremely absorbed by his work, almost like a robot. I think this just shows the juxtaposition of how much Ern has grown as a manager since the prior season. Al almost seems a bit annoyed by this or even a little lonely conveyed by this shot when Ern leaves to go handle some more business. So we cut to right before the show, they're backstage. We get a rare backstage look at Al and Darius ritual before he goes out and performs. I'd like to thank you for every life that's here with me. But as Al is warming up, the crowd is chanting his name and someone gets on stage to hype up the crowd that Ern promptly tells to fuck off. And no one knows who that person is that just randomly jumped on stage. They figured it was one of the runners or stage managers, but no one is exactly sure. So Al hits the stage and we get a little clip of Darius just fucking grooving. I always thought it was interesting that besides the first episode, we never really see Al rap. Even then, it's just through a YouTube video for his post 
postal mixtape. But anyway, Al gets done with the show and when he gets back to his room, he realizes that his phone is gone. The gang comes to the conclusion that the make a wish kid took it, but unfortunately this kid had to get carted out of the Paperboy show because he had a quote unquote cancer attack, the name of the episode. The paramedics were called in, he said he was having a cancer attack. Cancer attack? No. Hey. And Ern has to rush down and meet this kid by the ambulance and give him a pat down and accuse a literal make-a-wish kid of stealing Al's phone, which he promptly gets booed out of the room for. Ern goes back to Al unsuccessful, so Ern just tells Al that he can just get a new phone in the morning, but unfortunately that won't work because Darius has convinced Al to never back up his storage to iCloud and Al needs the data on his phone. This is when Sox comes in saying that he believes that the guy that was on the stage might have been the one that was created. In. So Ern gets the information from the venue owner, and it turns out that it's actually the venue owner's nephew, Wiley. So Ern is figuring out that Wiley was just there for an interview and doesn't actually work with the venue, but luckily he finds his resume on a desk and calls him up. While Ern is talking over the phone to Wiley, we see Socks getting more and more worked up listening to the conversation before he just takes the phone out of Ern's hand and starts negotiating for him. And with Team Paperboy, yeah, we're plugged in down here, man. Mob shit. Yeah? Like, I'm the white Liam Neeson, bruv. I will track you down and I will fucking bury you if you're not back here in 15 minutes, phone in hand! I wonder if the Liam Neeson line was used because of his recent controversy regarding an interview where the movie star once said that after one of his friends was assaulted by a black man, he roamed the streets just looking for any reason to beat up a black guy. And I did it for maybe a week, hoping some black bastard would come out of a pub and have a go at me about something, you know, so that I could kill him. So obviously Sock's interrogation style doesn't work and Al takes the phone back and talks to Wiley and convinces him to come back to the venue to talk about the missing phone. So Wiley actually agrees to come back to the venue and at this point is when we get into the thick of the episode. We get an interrogation scene with the boys and Wiley but no Socks due to his temperament which was the right move because fuck Socks. Now this interrogation scene seems to be packed with misdirection as it's clear that Wiley is is either playing the boys or is actually just a very weird fan. The whole interrogation, I really couldn't tell if he was playing them. And even by the end of the episode, I am still just as unsure what was going on. But when Wiley arrives, they put him in a holding cell situation. And Wiley is actually kind of worried that the gang is going to kill him. Is that why you said you were going to kill me? We all have to die sometime. Maybe my end should come in the hands of Paperboy. Wiley also says that he feels like he's dreaming, and we get this line from Alfred. Trust me, ain't nobody dreaming this dog. Further showing that the main cast episodes are reality and that the one-off episodes are all in a dream world. Also, look at this shot of Al. The whole time during the interrogation, I kept on getting Dark Knight vibes, Wiley being the unhinged mastermind Joker and Al being the titular Dark Knight, Ern being Commissioner Gordon and Sox being a two-face, no good, mark ass, trick ass. I'm not even really saying this as a reach, but obviously they like throwing in the odd Batman reference into the show. So Wiley the kid asks what Al dreams of. What do you dream of? Box top Chevys or kissing the thong on a rose. What's sweet, but it hurts. It'd make you never want to trust. Anything too beautiful. I am sorry to go further with this reach, but all I could think about in this phrasing is the seal song Kiss from a Rose that was also the single for 1995's film Batman Forever. Fuck it, I'm reaching. It's a Batman episode. I'll take my crown as king of the reach now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, but seriously, Al listens to Wiley's specific and weird phrasing about box top Chevys and kissing a rose and tells everyone to leave so they can have a meeting. Alfred tells the boys that in high school, his dream car was a box top Chevy and his girlfriend's name was Rose. Rose apparently cheated on him with his friend Pookie and Alfred actually rapped about these things in unreleased music that was solely on his phone. And the only way that this kid Wiley would know those specific details is if he has gone through Al's phone and is fucking with them. So the gang decided to go back in like, Good cop? Bad cop. Devastated cop. The good cop, bad cop routine? Not exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a bad man. 
it's a Batman reference. So they get back in there and Ern gives Wily a coke and he is so excited. But while Ern is going over his details and the good cop persona, Wily catches him off guard by asking about his accent. You don't have the same accent, you know, the, the same southern dialect as Paperboy. Uh, Were you told as a child you talk white? Wiley says he thinks it's interesting when people aren't allowed in the Universal group to be part of the team. And while the gang was pondering what the fuck he meant, Wiley asks for a cigarette and Al provides the funniest line in the show. <coughs> Why do people smoke these? Yep, I'm done. I'm gonna beat your wait, wait, wait. Or maybe this whole sequence is the funniest shit because right after that, Wiley asks for his phone call. However, he doesn't have his phone, so he asks the gang to call it for him. So Wiley recites his number, and it turns out to be the same exact phone number as Al's. In the rage that Brian Tyree Henry portrays was so damn on point with my own feelings up to that point that I couldn't help but laugh my ass off. And that's my fucking number, nigga. Yeah. You got my fucking phone. Wiley shits himself and and Al backs off. He's just a kid, he's just a super fan. But then this guy says he's 32. Scared kid, you're interrogating a 19 year old. I'm 32. Nah. Huh? What? Bruh? How are you 30? Okay, never mind. So the gang takes another break and Ern confronts the venue owner about this weird ass nephew thing. And the venue owner admits that he really hasn't seen this kid in 15 years. But family is family, I guess. The thread runs deeper because Sox comes in saying that Google his address is the fucking Cirque du Soleil headquarters. He's toying with us. Yeah, he's definitely toying with them. So this causes Sox to get enraged again and says that he's so mad he wants to kill this. I could kill this knee. Oh, I'm so mad, man. But stops before he says the quiet part out loud. I think this just adds more credence to the Liam Neeson reference he made earlier in the episode. The gang comes to the conclusion that Wiley definitely stole the phone and they should try to use the fact that he's a fan to record a confession. However, when they go back in there, Wiley is on to them and knows exactly what's going on and predicts that he's about to be recorded. You know this good cop, bad cop scenario? Uh, at this point, I think you're probably gonna try to uh, record me to get me to say something incriminating, but uh, look, I, I don't think you'll get what you want that way. Al is kind of sick of the game and asks Ern to leave. And at this point, we get a very vulnerable scene with Al when he has some one on one time with Wiley. Al admits that he hasn't been able to write any music for seven months. However, he recently had an interaction while sitting by the docks listening to a man sing that inspired him to make more music. But the melody is on his phone and he needs it to be able to move forward. Al also says that he never thought he would be a rapper, but the opportunity just came to him. I have a theory that the man Al was talking about near the docks could be the alternate Ernest we have seen on a lake and by a pool in the previous dream episodes. I think that this season is using water during ominous moments that inspire change. White Ernest or Dream Ernest turned into a dark specter on a lake in episode one. That same Ernest deletes himself into a pool in episode four. So he may have been the man singing by the docks that inspired Al to make more music in this episode. Also, we know that Fernando experienced a moment of change when he encountered a ghost that was soaking wet during a late night encounter. Anyway, Wiley turns the tables on Al and has a guitar brought to him. Wiley tells Al that he wrote a song about a girl that broke his heart in eighth grade and her name was Rosie. Not very different from Al's Rose. When this happened, Wiley was very lonely and when he heard Al's postal mixtape, he felt exactly the same and couldn't empathize. Wiley continues by playing a song for Al, which maybe, maybe not is the song or melody that Al heard. And honestly, I have no clue what Wiley's getting at at this one. Wiley also says that he and Al have the same birthday. Did you know we share a birthday? April 28th. I couldn't find any significance with that date, so maybe it's just a weird coincidence he wanted to bring up to fuck with Al more. But after he plays this song, Wiley thanks Al for seeing him and just dips out. So Al has to leave the venue without getting his phone back. And before getting on the tour bus, Sox apologizes for the way he was acting throughout the episode. But when everyone is on the bus, Sox takes out Al's phone from his pocket and tosses it in the garbage. So what the hell is going on? So I was gonna do another breakdown of what I 
I thought was going on with Sox and if Wiley was really in on the whole thing. But I would rather just pose that question to see what you guys think. So leave your theories down below in the comments. Um, I know I brushed over a lot of other things, but you know, there's always next week. I do have a Twitter. I forgot that I have a Twitter, so you can hit me up on there. Hey, just thank you again for helping me reach 2,000 subscribers. Yeah, you guys are amazing, uh, but I'm just going to end the video right here. Like and subscribe or I will steal your phone.